Hi, this is a demo for the connection handler function inside the DeepChat and ActiveChat components, which is used to override the default connection behavior using your code. Traditionally, we aim to provide an out-of-the-box experience for our developers, where connecting to a service can be accomplished by just using a single property. However, the more we engage with our developers, the more we understand that connections with services can go beyond making simple server requests, and ultimately, they need a customizable solution to control the request logic themselves. This is where the connection handler comes in, as it passes all control to the developers and allows them to use their own code for making requests and handling all the logic around them. Now, as a quick disclaimer, the DeepChat ecosystem is updated all the time, so there is a chance that some things you are seeing in this video may not be what's on the live website. However, this should be enough to give you an overview of how the handler functionality works. So in front of me, I have the documentation for the connection handler. And to quickly sum it all up, it is just a function that is triggered when the user sends a message, or if you're using WebSockets, when the component is initialized. The function has two arguments, with the first one being the outgoing message body, which is using the request message type that depends on what kind of content you are sending inside the message. And the second argument is known as signals, and it is the important one. If we scroll down to the signals type, we can see that it is an object or a map that contains multiple functions. These functions are used to notify the component on what is happening inside the handler, and what the component should be doing, whether it should be displaying a response, an error, etc. The handler function is available for all connection types, such as basic HTTP requests, streaming, web sockets, etc. Now to make this demo more interactive, let's go into a live code base and see how we can implement the handler inside DeepChat. For this particular demo, I have chosen React as my framework of choice but the syntax should be similar no matter what framework you use. You may also notice that I'm using DeepChat's dev package. This is because when I was filming this video, the handler functionality was not yet available in the core package. When it comes to React, you can access component properties via an element reference, or you can simply inline them inside the markup, which is exactly what I'm going to do, just to keep things nice and simple. First, I'm going to type in the connect property. And previously, what we would have done to connect to a service is define its URL. However, this time, we're going to use the handler function. And if we recall, the first argument is the outgoing message body. And the second one contains the signal functions. So the handler itself gives us the freedom to do anything that we want, such as making calls to other services, we can utilize other libraries such as Langchain to connect to other bots and control state if we want. We can do all of that as long as we tell the component what is happening inside the handler function. So for a basic request, all we need to do is trigger the on response signal. And we can see that this signal requires the response object. So if we quickly go into its type, we can see that it accepts text, files, and other properties. So if we go back, we'll pass in text, which is going to say handler response. Just to keep things a bit more realistic, we're going to put it inside a timeout, because we ultimately can execute this anytime that we want. OK, let's start the app. Let's try it out. Perfect. The handler response is there. It is important to note that when it comes to error handling, the errors must be handled inside the handler function. And to tell the component that there has been an error, all we need to do is use the error property. OK. And if we go back to the browser and say hello, perfect. It works just the way we need it. You may also notice that there are other title signals out there, and they're used for streams and web sockets. For the purposes of this video, 
free handling them during the demo may take some time. So to keep things simple, let's go back to the documentation and I'll explain to you how they work there. So the way stream and WebSocket signals work is really no different to how we've done it for a basic request. If we go into the stream example and look inside the handler function, we can see that as soon as you successfully establish a connection with the service, you must call the on open signal. This replaces the loading bubble with a message bubble that is ready to receive text. Of course, if something goes wrong, you can always raise an error using the on response signal. But assuming everything goes right, for each incoming event, you must call the on response signal with the text or HTML property to update the message bubble. And when you're finished, all you need to do is call the on close signal to allow the user to send further requests. There is a special signal called stop clicked which is actually triggered by the component itself when the user clicks the stop button during a stream. When this happens, the component stops listening to all of the signals, and you can optionally listen to this signal to close the stream inside the handler yourself. Now when it comes to WebSockets, they're really no different to the stream ones as well. The core difference here is the fact that the handler is triggered as soon as the component loads up. And just like streams, when you successfully establish a connection with your service, you need to call the on open signal. Now I'm going to quickly jump over to the new user message signal. And once again, this is another special signal that is triggered by the component when the user sends a message. And we can listen to this by assigning a function onto the listener property. And whenever this is triggered, we can send a message to the service. Now whenever we retrieve a message from the service, we can trigger the on response signal which will send a message to the component. Of course, if the WebSocket connection closes, you can call the on close signal, which will stop the user from being able to send messages, and you can attempt to reconnect inside the handler. And if you're successful, just call the on open signal once again, which will allow the user to send messages again. This pretty much wraps up the handler demo. Make sure to check out our repo for the latest updates. And as always, happy coding.